So I found this old Fairbank scale on Craigslist. Uh, it's a number eight, which is not too common. Uh, the number eights are quite a bit bigger uh, than the uh, the more common ones that you see at flea markets and uh, out on eBay and stuff. Um, I thought it might be kind of old, and it turns out I was right. It was probably made in the uh, 1860s, uh, maybe as late as early 1870s, um, and uh, picked it up just in time. The, the guy had lost his uh, storage space, and it was headed out to an auction probably the next day. Um, I uh, only had uh, two ways I could have moved it at the time. One is my little trailer, and the other one was with the car. Uh, the trailer was snowed in in the backyard, so kind of a bugger to get it out. So I decided I'd use the car, and um, turned out that it was better off uh, for the scale to use the car. Um, it's a wood frame scale, and pounding up and down on a trailer probably would have not done it much good. Uh, so uh, the, I'm sure the guy was ready to call for the padded truck when I showed up in a Prius to pick the scale up. But um, I took it all apart, loaded it up, and... Uh, here we go. Um, the hardest part to uh, to uh, deal with was the lever assembly because it weighs about 80 pounds and it keeps trying to fold itself up as you as you maneuver it. Um, the whole scale weighs about 350 pounds. Um, brought it home and put the pieces in the corner of the shed and um, set out to look for some information and to see what I could learn about it. There really was not much out there and I decided that um, whatever I found and learned along the way, I would put out so that other people might use it, you know, if they were in a similar situation. Um, so, this is the second biggest portable platform scale that Fairbanks made. Um, they made a number two, which is quite a bit bigger than this, and um, I've seen those in pictures. It's a big scale. Someday I'm going to have to try to find one. Um, I did find a piece of original sales literature uh, which was not too easy to read but um, it's kind of in bad shape but I managed to get all the specs out of it for the different size scales that they made and I put together this little chart um, you can see um, the number two is at the top up there um, they kind of go by the platform size and then you know uh, various weights that they can weigh um, the most common uh, ones that you see out there are tens and elevens you know the um, the the bigger ones. You don't see them too often. Um, the ten and a half's a little bit uncommon. The eleven and a half is probably pretty common too, actually. But the ten and a half's not too common. Um, various different models are offered. You know, within this chart, with with and without drop levers, um, and with and without wheels. Although the number two always came with wheels, as far as I know. Um, the, the scales with no wheels are, are fairly uncommon. You don't see them too often. Most of these were ordered with wheels, which I guess makes sense. So the first thing I set out to do on this uh, rest, little restoration project was determine what color uh, the various parts of the scale were. Um, and there was very little information out out there available, I, I really, I really couldn't find much of anything. I mean, there's plenty of pictures of scales that people have painted whatever color they wanted, but uh, to find, you know, original scales and try to figure out the colors, not, not an easy thing. Um, clearly, they used over the years various shades of of blue for the the uh, the column. Um, some of them are really light, very light robin's egg blue. Some of them are fairly dark, and I've seen a couple of green ones. I don't know if they're original or not, but they looked it. Um, but anyways, um, I did find a brochure um, with this description in it, but I don't know how old the brochure is. Um, it's, you know, it, it could be of the same vintage, or maybe it's a little bit later, but it says, The painting and ornamentation of these scales is given the greatest care to produce a handsome, lasting finish that in every way conforms to the high quality of the other features. The ironwork is given substantial coats of black paint, ornamented with bronze, and well varnished. All woodwork is given a thorough filling coat, several covering coats of blue, striped in bronze, and well varnished. The wood platform panel is painted gray. 
So um, I will say that I didn't see any gray on the platform panel, but it's pretty well worn, so not sure about that. But um, in in terms of other components, um, here's the uh, the the uh, main pull rod that goes from you know the, the the lever mechanism in the bottom all the way up to the beam. Uh, it's a long you know long rod with two hooks, one on each end. Uh, you can see that you know it was painted black at the at the top where you can where it was visible, but you know once you go down about 10 inches or so um, it it's rusted and, and there was no trace of paint on it so I don't think it was painted below there um, the next this next picture here are the, the two bolts that hold the support forging to the wooden column and they were clearly painted black before they were installed so that's a little clue there um, this next uh, picture is the the little tie plate at the top um, where the um, where the support rods um, sort of bear down on the wood and you can see that it was painted black and um, the blue has been transferred from the wood you know because it was all squished together over the years and it, it sort of just stuck on there but there is black under there so that was black um, this next part is the cap that goes on top of the column and um, it clearly was painted black, you know, when it was new. Um, all the paint on the outside's gone, but inside it's got some black, um, and it uh, also has some blue transferred from the uh, the column. Um, I might add that, unfortunately, someone has cut uh, the <laughs> one of the one of the bars that holds the the weights on. Um, it, it's it's supposed to be symmetrical, the top and bottom of the picture, the, the sort of rectangular opening. It's supposed to be two of those, and you can see where someone has cut the the bottom one. Um, I don't know why, but it's kind of sad. And you can see the saw marks. They, they actually cut it. I thought it broke at first, but it, nope, they cut it. Um, so the next uh, picture is the top side of that same component, and you can see the blue that has been transferred from the crossbeam. Um, onto that. So, you know, that's it. that tells you the cross beam was painted, you know, before it was assembled. Um, this bracket was also painted before it was assembled. So they, they did a lot of, you know, prep work ahead of time. Um, the next picture shows the bottom of uh, one of the boards from the platform, and it is painted with some kind of a sort of burgundy primer or I don't know base coat. Maybe that's the filler coat they're talking about. I'm not sure what it is, but it's 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 they're painted burgundy, so they were painted on the bottom side. Um, the um, the next picture here is uh, the underneath of the uh, of the base, and it is rusted. Everything everywhere. There's no sign that it was painted at all. There are black drips. I don't know if that's original. Probably not. But it could be, um, or it could be that someone repainted the scale, who knows, and they were a little sloppy. Um, but I don't think Fairbanks painted the inside of this. Um, I'm going to paint it because I it's going to be you know out in the shed, and I don't want it to continue to rust, although it probably wouldn't rust much more. Okay, here is the top of the crossbar. Um, and um, this this uh, little area here is what was underneath the tie plate. These two holes are where the the uh, the long through rods go to hold the uh, the column all together. And um, um, you can see there's a little black paint sort of smeared on top of the blue, and um, what's left of the blue, um, you know, pretty good indication of the of the color. This was kind of protected from the weather and probably never really been seen before. Um, the underside of this same area um, uh, which is shown here has, is, w sits on top of the uh, the iron cap um, and there's a little bit of blue there you know it's still sort of visible. Um, the, the part that was weathered is sort of looks like a very very dark blue but I think th I think the paints changed in color you know, over time, there is still some paint there. I mean, it, it didn't come off, um, so it's just darkened up a lot. Um, the, uh, the the top of the column, which is sort of beveled, it almost looks carved here. 
um, to fit into that iron cap is uh, still retains a little bit of the blue paint um, sort of at the back of the picture out of focus you can see the inside is also blue um, there's a better picture of that coming up um, right here actually um, the inside of the column where it was visible is painted blue where it was not visible you know was not painted I mean they didn't they didn't paint it but the rest of it was painted blue and um, there's a little bit of original blue right there which was kind of a cool find um, this um, next picture shows the uh, this washer and nut um, hold uh, they, they, they hold the uh, the special uh, special head bolt which secures the uh, drop lever uh, mount and um, once again a little original paint kind of showing under there um, which is kind of cool um, this is the top of where that bolt went and it you know that that component was not super tight um, you know you can see that a lot of a lot of stuff got under there over the years and it very little original color is is left uh, to it but that's what happened to it um, this next uh, picture shows the bolt and washer that hold the uh, the guide for the end of the beam um, you can see how crude the bolts are I mean there's there's you know they, they look like they're I don't know if they're forged or or how they were made they're they very well might be iron not steel um, very crude and this guy was tightened up pretty tight <laughs> kinda crushed into the wood unfortunately but that's what they did um, so this uh, last picture here is actually I mean it's out of order it's after I started putting the thing back together but it shows it's the only good picture that shows the color of the uh, the wood frame underneath the scale which is kind of a brown and I don't know if that's intentional I I, I just I really don't know um, the uh, I mean I would have assumed it would have been black it would have been easy for them to paint the whole thing black the the, the brochure I read in the beginning um, of this uh, this little uh, section here um, you know said I mean basically they said all the wood is blue so this should be blue I guess I don't know um, there is one or two old old pictures that I have or uh, they're really not pictures I guess they're pen and ink drawings and they show um, this at least being a light a fairly light color and they have um, a decal on here that actually says Fairbanks um, and I don't know when what time period that was I found no decals on this one uh, but anyways under all the grunge was this sort of brownish color on on the wood here are a few shots of the various ways things were made um, a lot of the the smaller parts appear to be handmade um, so starting with this hook here this is the bottom end of the main pole rod this hook uh, hooks onto the the nose bearing on the um, the lever assembly right under the column and it really looks handmade it's very precise but it looks handmade it's pretty cool um, this is the upper end of that same rod this this hook pulls on the beam and uh, also appears to be handmade um, this next shot is uh, one end of uh, one of the four spiders there are four spider links underneath the platform that control the motion of the platform they sort of keep it in line keep it um, lined up correctly on the bearings um, so these spider links kind of bridge between the, the the base casting and the platform casting and you can see that uh, these look to be forge welded by hand I, I, they really to me they look handmade by a blacksmith very very precise um, a lot of uh, real true craftsmanship went into making these it's totally amazing um, the geometry that they were able to come up with um, I think by hand um, and uh, here's another shot of uh, of another end of one of the spiders you can still see the uh, the forge weld there um, so these loose ends of the spiders uh, sit on cone, these cone shaped little pins which are on the platform um, the pins are 
you know they're tapered so the the the, the, the eye of the spider kind of will center there but um, to prevent it from getting jammed they cast this the little um, triangular um, like protrusion at the bottom of the cone pretty cool design so that keeps the the eye in the proper location on the cone so that it it can't jam up and it moves freely kind of a neat thing um, the stationary end of the spider links um, here is uh, actually um, they're, they're actually sort of riveted um, the, the 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 base the casting of the base uh, had little cones and the eyes were slipped over them this little strap of steel or maybe iron was placed over it and then they were peened over so uh, you really can't service that but <laughs> uh, that's what they did um, this is one of the uh, the lever hangers there are four of these under the base and um, they also cannot be removed um, the you can see here where the the little loop that holds the lever uh, sorry the um, the uh, the uh, hanger is actually riveted and peened over into the iron base so that's sort of a difficult to service part if you ever needed to work on that um, the little protrusion right next to those riveted uh, heads which is here um, this thing is uh, like a landing pad for the um, platform so that when you release the drop lever um, the platform has a little thing to sit on there are four of these. Underneath the platform um, are these, uh, I guess this is probably steel or hardened steel um, plate that is the bearing surface. And um, you can see there's a keyway, a round key that keeps it in place, um, a bolt. I never took any of those bolts out. I, I assume they, you know, they would come out. But um, if you needed to change the bearings, you could. Um, and um, this way that you know the the bearings did not um, the the the, uh, the the lever bearings did not chew up the iron um, platform, which was kind of a cool thing. Um, this is another shot of one of the uh, this this is a corner of the base casting in here. This is um, one of the hangers. But what I was looking at here mo mostly was the uh, casting sand. This the the white lines that are in the cracks or or the corners. Are, is actually sand uh, left over from casting and um, I'm kind of aware of that and finding that in engines so um, when I saw it I kind of laughed and said oh they left a little in there it won't hurt anything but that is casting sand um, so this next pot is the forging that holds uh, that, that stabilizes the column it's one piece on these early scales the later scales they made it in three pieces which is probably a lot easier to do but this is a one piece um, it looks handmade, you know, forging. It looks like it was made by a blacksmith. Um, it, it goes from the base up to the column, across the column, and then back down to the base. Um, here is one of the mounting ears where it attaches to the base. I don't know how they made these holes. I mean, that looks like they... <laughs> it looks like they just punched it through. I, I don't really know. Um, either that or the iron has degraded over time and uh, it kind of expanded. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but boy, that looks crude. Um, here's the other end right here. It's not quite as bad, but it still has a little bit of a ridge around it. Strangely enough, they sit flat and the bolts work fine on them. I, it was all together. Um, so moving on to the other things here. here here's a, a, a shot of one of the wheel nuts. Um, these are very heavy um, nuts that have a molded shoulder. It's like a one-piece shouldered square nut. Really cool. If any of these had ever been lost, you'd have to make them. You're never going to find this anywhere. Um, here's another one. This is not as good a shot, but um, it's another another nut. Um, so the axles are actually um, held in by little strips of probably steel or maybe iron, I'm not sure, um, which turned out to be brazed onto the axle shaft. Um, they look crude. They're they're not even square. Um, it's, they're just like you know, it looks like sort of haphazardly cut um, holes. Kind of punched through them. Not even really maybe in line. <laughs> they look a little off. Um, they probably knew that it didn't matter, and here was a spot you could save a couple minutes. You know, um, but 
the, that was how they attached the axles. So uh, the the uh, the axles are not a very strongly attached part. They just mount to the wood. Those ears screw into the wood frame, which you'll see later. Um, so the the um, the rear axle has a bend in it to go underneath the um, the the levers, and where they put it in the fixture to bend it, they put these um, um, big punch marks. And uh, you know I've seen machinists and metal workers do this all the time. I mean you punch every, you punch mark everything that way you don't lose your 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 bearings, you know. Um, but pretty big punch marks here and centered at the at the two bends. Um, they're they're on each end of the axle. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, here is the uh, here's the brazing, by the way. This is this is the yellow um, um, little splatters you can see there are are the leftovers of where that brazed joint was made. Um, so this last shot, this is one of the two donuts that hold the two lever uh, assemblies together, and you can see that you know they bent one of the little um, pivot uh, bearings up a little bit to sort of retain the donut. Um, I could not get this apart. I didn't want to force anything. I tried and tried all different positioning and, you know, wiggling around different things. I, I could not separate them, so I never did. Um, these, um, by the way, these um, pivot bearings um, can be removed. I talked to a guy who worked at, at Fairbanks um, a long time ago. He worked there for, I don't know, 40-something years. And these are a taper fit in the iron, which I did not know. So um, he says if you need to change them, you can knock them out and, you know, reseat new ones into the tapered bore. Um, I didn't try to take any of them out. I left them all alone.